Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hello, this is Buona from Buona.tv, and today I'm going to be conducting a screencast review of Parallels Desktop 5 for the Mac platform. This screencast will be conducted in conjunction with Chris Perillo and his channel at www.youtube.com slash LockerGnome. What you see here is the Parallels Desktop splash screen when you first launch the software. When you first launch it and you don't have any virtual machines installed, you'll only see the first two options of a new Windows installation or import virtual machines. I have a use your virtual machines option here since I've already created a virtual image. The new Windows installation option will allow you to create a virtual machine with Windows or any other OS and run it in parallel with Mac OS X, hence the name Parallels. You can also import existing virtual machines if you use Parallels, Virtual PC, VMware, and VirtualBox. And you can also use your current virtual machines. Optionally, you can watch some video tutorials on how to get started with Parallels Desktop 5 for Mac. So what we'll first do is we'll conduct a new Windows installation so you can get a feel on how easy it is to get started with Parallels. I'll click on New Windows Installation on the splash screen. And here you can see that it has an operating system detection screen where I can select the operating system source. Now, if your operating system source is on a CD or DVD, you can pick that from the drop down, or you can optionally provide an ISO image of the OS you wish to install. To do so, simply click this drop down. And you can choose an image file from your operating system, or you can use an existing image file. Here's an image file that I have for the Windows 7 RC1 test OS. So let's select that. After you have selected an image or an installation CD DVD media, click continue. After Parallels analyzes the image, it will ask you for your username, company name, and Windows product key if it successfully detects the OS image. As you can see, it automatically knew that this was a Windows 7 image. So what I'll do is I'll put in my product key here, and it'll take me to the next step. Before I enter my product key and company name, I can optionally click the advanced button at the bottom here. This will allow me to specify the CPU and memory settings for the virtual machine. Parallels will automatically recommend a memory range based on your currently installed maximum memory. This particular machine has 2 gigabytes of memory, so Parallels is recommending that I use between 512 and 1 gigabyte. And it specifies 768 megabytes. I can also specify the number of processors that Windows will use. Once I have done this, I can click OK to apply the settings. Now I'll enter the Windows product key. After I have entered the appropriate information, it will now ask me to give a name to the virtual machine. This is a name you can provide uh, to basically identify the image from others. For example, if I were to create a Windows 7 image and create, it, create an Ubuntu image, I'd want to name one Windows 7 and the other one's Ubuntu, so I can distinguish the two. You can also optionally let other Mac users access this virtual machine and specify location. Since I'm running low on disk space on my C drive or on my main drive, if you will, <laughs> I know you Windows users are like, oh, why are you calling the C drive? I can specify an alternate folder and I have a folder designated on an external drive called Parallels Images. Regarding sharing, I can also select redirect Windows users folders to Mac, share my home folder, or do not share at all. So this is an integration level for your virtual machine. Once I click create, the process will begin, but let's check out the advanced settings. Again, we can here specify the processors or the main memory if we forgot to do it in a step 
previous. Let's click Create to continue. Click Create. And the virtual machine creation process will begin. Here you can specify some boot options as if we prepare to install the operating system. Here we can specify again the image file that we wish to use for the CD DVD on boot options. Once we've completed this, we click start and Parallels will automatically install Windows 7. It'll input the product key and it'll take care of all of the information that we input it before so that the installation will be conducted hands free. When the operating system comes up, it'll be ready to go. We will not demonstrate the entire process since it'll consume too much time but know that Windows 7 will come up installed and ready to go. Going back to our splash screen, we'll now use an existing virtual machine so we can walk through the features and functions of Parallels. After I click use your virtual machines, it'll list the one image that I have installed. If we have multiple images installed, we'll see a different interface where it will list the amount of virtual machines called the virtual machines list. So in order to start this image all I have to do is click on the icon here. It's a very nice interface with drop shadows and this is called Windows W7RC1 and this is a Windows 7 RC1 image that I've already created and I'm going to click this to start it. Here we see my Windows 7 RC1 virtual image booted up and ready to go. As you can see, this is a full-blown Windows installation with all the menus, all the programs that you would have in another Windows installation on its own dedicated machine. I'll launch Internet Explorer to demonstrate that this is actually truly Windows with Internet connectivity, which is going through my Mac. Before we go any further, let's look at, at some of the options with uh, Parallels inside the Preferences. So I'll go to Parallels Desktop Menu and select Preferences to bring up the Preferences. Here we'll see several tabs here, General, Appearance, Keyboard and Mouse, USB Network, Memory, Security, Speech, iPhone, Update and Feedback. On the General tab, we can specify a default folder for virtual machines or use detail, detailed log messages. As you can see here, we can lock these options uh, so that we can prevent further changes if someone else is using this machine. In terms of appearance, we can specify options for the dock icon. Uh, as far as the transition to full screen, we can use several effects, which are built into the Mac, uh, the, the, the Mac Core uh, video options. We can animate certain features and adjust their speeds. As far as keyboard and mouse shortcuts, we can specify those here. We can enable Mac OS X system shortcuts and we can specify right click options for uh, those of us with one mouse button. Here you can see we can uh, specify what to do when a new USB device is inserted into the Mac. You can ask the user what to do, connect it to the Mac or connect it to the actual virtual machine. Network options, we can do shared networking or host only networking, very similar to other virtual machine products. Here we can specify the total memory allocated to Parallels Desktop, automatic or we can specify it manually. We can specify security features, so we can require a password to create a new virtual machine, to add to an existing virtual machine, to remove a virtual machine, or to clone or convert a virtual machine. We can specify spoken commands and we can use the iPhone client, the Parallels mobile application uh, with Parallels by specifying this option. We can check for updates automatically and we can join the feedback program. So those are just some of the preferences that are available to customize Parallels to your liking. Some of the menu options for Parallels Desktop Include the file menu where we can do a new image, open, import, and download, empty the Windows recycling bin, and there's also some cloning options available. We can change the view 
We're going, we're going to go into these in detail in a little bit. Uh, we're going to have the, the windowed view, what you see here, crystal, coherence, full screen, and modality. We can use all displays in full screen. Use Mac look, make a screenshot, make a clip, access the Windows start menu, recycling bin, show the Windows desktop, hide the Windows taskbar, and so on. We can start, suspend, shut down, restart the virtual machine, pause it, stop it, reset it, take a snapshot, revert to snapshots, and manage snapshots. Snapshots. We can also compress it, reinstall Parallels tools, which will make the, the inter, uh, interoperability between the Mac and the Parallels image a lot better, which uh, it does it by default. When you install a Parallels image, it will install Parallels tools, and uh, it will keep those up to date. You can also install Parallels Internet Security. You can also configure the virtual machine as well. Devices, we can manage those from here. We can attach and detach virtual uh, devices to our virtual machine and manage those in this window. And there's also help and a windowed list. So your standard menu options as well as some more that are available in Parallels. Now let's talk about the various views that are available and the interoperability between your Mac OS X desktop and the Parallels image that we've created. To access the different views, we'll click the View menu, and we can see that the window view is the, the view that's selected right now. This is the virtual image inside of a window. We can select Crystal, Coherence, Full Screen, or Modality. So let's go ahead and select Crystal to change it to Crystal View. This may take a little bit to start up on my machine here. Now it tells us we have entered crystal mode and the Parallels desktop menu and dock icons are hidden. We can right click on the Parallels icon in the menu bar to open the start menu and we can all click to open the extended menu. So let's right click up here and you can see we see the start menu pop up behind this, this information window. And we can also alt click to open the extended menu. And it tells us my Windows applications are available here, but I have that turned off in my dock so I don't see them here, but you'll see them on yours. So as you can see, this crystal mode has intertwined this Windows Internet Explorer with my desktop, and it actually looks like that the uh, application is part of my desktop here. We have some uh, icons up here which are very similar to those you see in Windows. You can see your internet access. You can see your battery life. And you can see the USB uh, indicators and the PC issue indicators and the like. So let's exit Crystal and go back to the normal view. Now let's look at coherence mode. When clicking this, this will take our virtual machine and transform it into what's called coherence mode. The windows and all of the applications that are running in our Parallels desktop will actually look like they're running alongside the Mac OS X desktop. Much like the Crystal interface, you can see that the applications are independent. And here it tells us that our virtual machine is in coherence, which makes the Windows integrated with your Mac. We can also access the Start menu and Windows applications by clicking on this Parallels Desktop icon in the dock. Here we can launch applications, and they will actually look like they're running in coherence with our Mac desktop. And finally, there's the modality view. This will take our Windows 7 virtual machine here, and it will put it in a form in a window where it can be resized to any size at all. This will enable us to easily run our Parallels desktop alongside our Mac applications. So if we have a Mac application that we want to have in the foreground, and we also have a Windows application that we may want to pull in the background, such as Microsoft Outlook, we can run it in modality mode, and we can also make this window transparent through the modality settings. So they can be running, but out of our view. 
So these are some of the views that are available with Parallels Desktop to enable you to do things in, in, in several different ways and integrate with the dock, integrate with the menu system to ensure that your your ensure that your uh, your experience with the Windows ex with the Windows Virtual Machine is as seamless as possible, giving you a coherent experience. Now I probably didn't cover all the features and functions of Parallels in this screencast, so I encourage you to check out Parallels Help System, which has a great search uh, system where you can search the Parallels Help, a troubleshooting guide, uh, demos, and, and, and all kinds of video support where you can get more information on Parallels. If you want to visit and get more information on Parallels, go to go.tagjag.com slash Parallels for more information. You can also get some deals there via Chris Perillo. All right, this is Buona from Buona.tv in conjunction with www.youtube.com slash LockerGnome. And I hope you enjoyed this screencast of Parallels Desktop 5 for Mac. Take care.